All right, here we go. This is the video that people have wanted me to watch. Okay, so to skip through all the preamble, a couple days ago I made a video talking about New World's monetization. We watched that. It was about a leak from their non-disclosure agreement forums. Yep. And since then, New World have posted a an update on their Twitter they talking about you know apology. trying to placate people, assuage people's fears about the cash shop. And in mm -hmm. doing so, I think they've given the game away. I think this is actually worse now that they've said this yeah. than it was before. And there's only one point that really has has been brought up, and people seem to miss the point here. The, what this line here, all store items at launch will be exclusively cosmetic in nature. And a bunch of people have been like, oh, why did you make this video? You're a liar. Why did you take <laughs> rumors and leaks at face value? This is the same message as the leak, by the way. It's just got a little bit more info. And the thing- Well, anybody, like anybody that thought that it was fake is a moron. Really, I mean, anybody who thought that it was fake, like, I mean, imagine, oh, wow, I think it's fake that Amazon was going to try to try to make money off of something. Oh, bro, that's fake. Jesus, of course, obviously. You guys should be focusing on here is the part that says at launch, it will be exclusively yeah, cosmetic because that means at any point afterwards, they can just drop the dick on you. So here we go. Let's go through the, uh, the New World post <laughs> yep. on their Twitter. Some questions have come up yep. recently from our Alpha Patch Notes discussing an in-game storefront. Our plan mm -hmm. in having a store is to create an outlet for players who find enough value in store items that they are happy to purchase them. Our yeah. plan is not and never will be to create a feeling that store items are necessary to enjoy the game. All players will be able to play the full game experience we ship without having to make store purchases. It's just so stupid. Two things real quick. The first one being their plans to make money. It, like, it's yeah. just common sense. Their plans to make money. It's low-hanging fruit, but it, it, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Trying to act like there's some other fucking secondary reason for it. That's what's so funny to me. Is it's like, oh, no, we want to do this for... This is for the players. If it's for the players, why does it spend... Why, why does it cost money? It's not to make us happy. That's a byproduct. When they yeah. then start talking about something exactly. that I didn't see anyone True. mention online, the, the conversations I've seen have not been they're going to make the game like the cash shop purchases necessary to play the game but in saying this they make a real good point you know another game where you can buy the game and have the full game experience without having to pay pay anything in the cash shop what? black desert online you can buy oh. that game or get it for free five ten euros whatever it is and you can play from start to finish get yeah. from a complete brand new player to the end game where you're doing like siege wars in the castles for anybody who doesn't know black desert online has one of the worst cash shops like it's a complete fucking pay to win game like it, it's not like you can literally buy money in the game you can buy armor that increases your drop chance and it gives you more experience it, it's fucking ridiculous etc and never spend a penny you can technically Sucks. do that but look at that cash shop, look at the monetization of that game, the absolute fucking monstrosity that it is, yep. and tell me if that's something you want in your game. Because by their own definition, by saying this, exactly. all players will be able to play the full game experience we ship without having to make store purchases. That's leaving the door open for that exact same scenario. And do I think it's going to be yep. as bad as that? No, of course I don't. Not yet. But you can get as close to that as possible, and by their own definition here, it's not a problem. Even if it's half as bad, it's still not good. Because a lot of people that play black desert online in fact the majority that you'll see talking about this will say oh that stuff's not necessary listen to these words i'm going to use here yeah. it's convenience it's quality of life now <laughs> let's examine what yeah. quality of life and convenience is by definition something being convenient means that b beforehand it was not convenient you know who makes it not convenient the, the people selling you the convenience so this is How by convenient. definition they are making problems out of nothing yeah. to sell you the solution how do you guys yep. think it's a good idea to incentivize the company to yep. make the game and your experience there it is. worse so that you can buy the solution from them this is mm -hmm. this is the part that blows my mind because the people defending this i, I don't even think they know and this is the problem I, well I, they, they 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 do know i think that a lot of them do know but they don't want to admit it they don't want to actually like really just fucking be honest with themselves because it's like, how can you not know? Or they're probably just so desperate for a new game, they just don't give a shit. I really don't know how to get my point across to get these yeah. people to understand. They never they've will. They've had a magic trick pulled on them, and they just don't get it yet. Yep. It's not It's not clicked. Um, so the best way I can describe it is let's go back in time. Let's do a boomer moment. Okay. So I like 10, those. 15 years ago, before yeah. the fucking rot the of days. microtransactions absolutely destroyed the, the core of MMORPGs. Yeah. 
people had nine to five jobs and families what? back then and you know what happened people what? enjoyed games and you know no. how they did because games was designed in a way where oh. the monetization was was essentially incentivizing the game to be good if you didn't think the game was good you wouldn't pay you a monthly price to yeah, play it you would didn't, you you didn't Just buy the game sense. but as soon as that monthly price went away so did that game design where they had to design it to be fun month round year round to make that money from you so what yeah. they started doing was designing a game to be worse so that you would pay money to skip the game to get to the point where you think it will be fun mm -hmm. This is what they've done. And I don't know how people haven't yep. realized this, but you're part of your... Because they're in denial, man. They're in denial because you don't you don't think about it, right? And it, it's just, yeah, there are so many games that do this. It's not like there's one game or whatever that does this. There are so many other fucking games that do this. And they basically create problems and they leave problems in the game. Like, for example... If you are putting a boost in the game, I think that to some degree, you are acknowledging that that content is bad. That content is not fulfilling. Because if it was fulfilling, then you wouldn't have it be a boost and you would want players to play through it on their own. And the reason why they do the boosts and they keep the content in the game is because they can sell the boosts. So if you have good content that people don't want to boost through, you're not going to sell a lot of boosts. So if your goal is to sell boosts, then it's in your best interest to not have good content. Your own self-fulfilling prophecy of paying for these things and going, oh, you know, I work nine hours a day, I work 10 hours a day, so I like to be able to skip the game. I like to be able to, yeah. to boost and a catch up with other that. people. You shouldn't. You should want yeah. the game to be designed in a way that it respects your time enough that you can have fun regardless of what stage of the game you're at. Exactly. It should be fun from leveling. It should be fun from yeah. when you first hit level cap. It That's should be actually fun really when you've been point. at level cap for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a couple of years. True. But instead, you're part of them. You haven't changed. Nine to fives haven't changed that drastically. They've you're still working same. nine to five. You've still got a little bit of free time like, mm -hmm. like those people did back then. What has changed? It's how they've designed the games, the how they've monetized said. the games. If you can't see that shift, I don't know how how I can really get that point across because I don't think I'm crazy here. I think it's actually a really good point, right? Because like different people enjoy different things. Yeah, but like at a certain point, like if what you enjoy doing is just paying money to skip all the content in the game, that's not a that's not a mode of gameplay that I think should be supported by the company. So, like, for example, some people, the, the way they enjoy playing games is logging on and just, like, harassing other players. That's fine. Like, yeah, it's the way you enjoy playing a game. That doesn't mean it should be supported by the developers, right? That's why you have ignore lists and stuff like that. Um, and I understand, obviously, people like different things. But just because you like something doesn't mean that there should be a feature in the game that allows you to bypass it. And also, what he's bringing up is a really good point. That this person feels like they have to skip through the content because they're not experiencing it well. well what about the reality that the fact that they feel like they have to skip through it and this game has engineered a situation that they feel like they have to pay more money to get to a point that they want to be at rather than just play through the game and be able to enjoy it on their own. It's really manipulative. And it, it's so weird to me to see people that defend it at all. And I, I feel like there's less and less people like that every day, right? Because, um, you, you know, it becomes harder and harder to defend like things like this because it's just, it's a stupid opinion to have to defend this. And the only reason that people even think that at all is because the companies put it forward. Like any critical thinking on this would lead you to the logical conclusion that it's bad for the game. So the only people that like it are people that don't know what they're talking about. And so the more that we talk about it, the more people learn, and then the less people that are okay with it. This is a really good point. You're going to have to let me know yeah. if it's not, but it's the game design that's changed and you saying, uh, I think play, paying for boosts is good because it benefits me, is you yeah. not understanding that in doing so, you are incentivizing the company to continually make games that, that are worse for you because in doing so, that's what makes them more money. The worse the game is for you to then skip it, makes them more money exactly. just so i can really get the idea across to you i will now give you a direct example of new world specifically making a change in the game to make the game worse to sell you the solution because they okay. care right and we'll go through their twitter post about How's this that? in a minute they really care about the the game experience for i don't you. know what this and is not making the game worse just you know selling you convenience so here we go one of the only examples of being an absolute nerd and doing these boring fucking line by line text patch notes videos actually pays off from right. December 2020, Forge and Fury, 
quote, rested experience so that it now starts accumulating after 12 hours, increased from eight hours, and accrues at 2% per hour, decreased from 2.5% per hour, making rested XP worse within the game. From yesterday's Twitter post, quote, we will also test ideas on how to offer players quality of life <laughs> items for mechanics like rested XP and fast travel. We'll get to this whole thing in a minute, but there you go. That is that's crazy how those things. That's crazy how that happens. So they 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 make the game worse to sell the so they, that they that's literally what it is. How can you possibly fucking defend that? They're sabotaging their own game to make a little bit more money. <laughs> yeah, five head make a bad game. How is it? How is it that making a bad game has gone from being one head to five head? That's really what it is. Like if your game has enough hype behind it, it's better for you to make the game bad so you can sell the solutions on the store. We will also test ideas on how to offer players quality of life wow. items for mechanics like rested XP and fucking fast wow. We'll get to this whole thing in a minute, but there you go. That is them directly nerfing something in the game six months ago to then sell you a solution of making it better mm -hmm. in the game now. So the people that are defending this, I honestly don't know what to say to you at this point if you don't see how clear this is. Yeah, but it's obvious. The problem is, is that you guys have been convinced by these companies that it's in your best interest to do this and, and they're providing you a solution. But it's a solution to a problem that they've created over the years. Yeah. And let's continue going over this yeah, because it, there's so much more to hit on. I don't want this video to be like 30 minutes long. How is it? How is it so... I, this is crazy, man. It, it's so... I'm so glad. Like, I'm so thankful for this video. I really am. Because the fact that he was just able to show the rest of the experience and, and fucking just drop that fucking juxtaposition on people's fucking dick, dude. And just show them. Be like, listen, you think it's not happening? It already fucking did. It already fucking did. In the alpha, the game's not even out yet, and they're making it worse in order to incentivize these purchases. So all store items at launch will be exclusively cosmetic in, late, in nature. Yeah. We are introducing the storefront in alpha in order to test these items and their value. No selections in the store or their indicated cost during testing, there is no real cost in any case, Obviously. is final. Our purpose is quality assurance and gathering player feedback. So please share your thoughts once the system is introduced. The testing audience will see each type of item we are considering and have an opportunity to provide feedback before they are introduced to the live game. Now, a couple points on this. What I thought was funny about this before I before I mention that is whenever at the very beginning, <laughs> why well, hey man, hey man, why'd you shit on my floor? Oh, that's my bad, bro. If you give me 10 bucks, I'll clean it up. That that's that's so good. That's honestly so fucking good. That's fucking perfect what's funny to me is like so the new world obviously like the social media team at new world they initially thought the best or the best thing was to uh try to uh you know fucking reason with people and try to explain to them why adding these features is a good idea and nobody in the comments at all was buying it because this isn't a free-to-play mobile game or whatever right this is an mmo full of a bunch of neckbeards that see through bullshit like that a lot easier than a 12 year old that's hyped up to buy the next fortnite skin so these types of people are gonna immediately fucking see it and they're not gonna buy it and so then after that happened a while and they were just making it worse they changed to just saying thank you for your for your opinion uh we're gonna we're gonna take this into consideration because they could tell it was just making it worse. It was obvious they could tell it was just making it worse. It's kind of funny to have happen, but uh, there it is. The part you should really be paying attention to is the operative words here of at launch. Yeah. All store items yeah. at launch True. will be exclusively cosmetic in nature. So the people that are linking me this and going, oh, you're a liar. Why are you talking about things that are not going to be in the game? They've said it's going to be purely cosmetic at launch, guys. You keep missing that po point yeah. off. At launch, it's going to be purely cosmetic. Yeah. How long is that going to be? Um, what's going to be one adding day. after? Launches one day. I don't think this is transparency. Uh, apart from in the fact that it's, we can transparently see through your bullshit. The, the only yeah. reason to put something behind a non-disclosure agreement at this stage of the game when you're released in a couple months is to protect pre-orders. That's the only way I can see because why else would you have it behind there? Um, if you truly, truly value your, your players' feedback, 
why wouldn't you put this front and center and let people talk about it like i said yeah. you have the mechanisms in place already you post public patch that's notes a good point. to gain feed to, to get that's feedback a very from people. good point you post them so that people can have discussion and know what's going on about the game but this specific point the biggest point of the game the monetization you put that behind a fucking non-disclosure agreement that's transparent only in that we can see that what you're saying doesn't make sense looking towards the future we will well the reason why they did that is because they knew that it would happen they knew that people would get mad about it like anybody would know that like e like even the dumbest person in the in, in the world would know that people are going to get mad whenever monetization is getting added into it so of course they're trying to keep it on the down low because they don't want people to find out about it and have what happened happen because now they have to deal with this and now the player base is talking about how much they don't like the game and how much they don't want to play it now and now they have to play defense whereas like if they had released the game and it had the monetization options already then people would have had a certain level of sunk cost because they've already leveled up their character they've already been playing the game so there'd be less people willing to quit the game or stop playing because they're already invested in it so now because there's no investment in the game this is whenever they don't want people people to know about it because they have to get you it's like whenever you're fucking fishing right is you put the fish out there and you give them the bait you let them eat the bait because they don't know the fucking hooks there and then after they eat the bait after they're there then you get them with the fucking hook and that's exactly what's happening here it's literally a debate so test ideas on how to offer players quality of life items for mechanics like rested xp and fast travel both obtainable in game and purchasable in the store fast travel. the timing of release for these types of items will depend on how players progress in the months after launch the more players who are able to experience all of our exciting end game content and game modes the healthier the overall That's game so experience stupid. will be for all players i don't know who this is fooling because by definition if you put Morons. something in the cash shop you must think that there will be value in buying it otherwise Obviously. what would be the purpose of it being there if Duh. there is no incentive to get it if it gives you no advantage whatsoever if playing the game normally is perfectly sufficient to fast travel as much as you need to why would it be in the cash shop because yep. nobody would buy it it's it's fucking it's like imagine paying 50 cents to reset your hearthstone and um, so the fact that you're seeing things like this um and and this is going to be something that you know people won't really need to buy because because you'll be able to earn it in game I don't think it's true because if it, if that was the case it wouldn't be purchasable in the first place so this is one of the parts that i can't really reconcile in my brain to be honest because yeah. when you're talking about like oh the more players who are able to experience all of our exciting end game it's content so and the stupid. game modes the health of the overall game experience will be for all players it's so dumb. you're essentially saying that the the leveling process is, is bullshit and and people shouldn't care about it and it's just there literally as exactly. a well, fucking barrier for entry for end game and at that point, you're happy selling people boosts and stuff because they shouldn't care about it. And that, for me, before your game's even launched, is just, it's yeah. so ridiculous that I don't even really know what to say about it. And then they double down on this on Twitter, and it's honestly mad what they say. They basically say here, it isn't about rushing people to endgame. It is about su supporting people who don't have as much time to play and helping them reach the endgame with the time available to them. <laughs> then make the game better. Like, w what? Like, it's not even out yet. Like, it's not even released. Which completely misses the point. Whoever's doing the PR, whoever's doing the Twitter for this game doesn't understand what people are saying. And then somebody mm -hmm. says, if you see your content is skippable mm -hmm. or not relevant, that buying a boost is a good way to get into the real content, then you failed to create an interesting content progression. Yeah. Make leveling faster True. if you care about people wasting their time or if endgame is all you care. True. A new world Twitter account responds again and says, MMOs take a tremendous time investment that not everyone has available. N yeah, because you make them that way. Literally, you're the company that makes it that way. You can change that. L literally, by definition, this is a problem you're creating. Boosts can be a way for someone who doesn't have time to get yep. more out of the time that they can play yep. and support the game and community in another way, which is all this really comes down to. So I responded and I basically said, make the leveling faster by default or make the leveling experience actually fun and people won't care if they can't skip it as it will have been worth playing. Well, there's a lot of people that will always want to skip the content. They will always want to just go straight to the end game and they don't care about anything else except for the end game. They don't care about the story. They don't care about anything. They just want to play for the end game. But you shouldn't make the game cater to that kind of person. Like, it's the same as what happened in Wrath of the Lich King whenever Blizzard made the game. They made WoW appeal to so many people that it stopped appealing to MMO players. 
and then they did it in in cataclysm too there are target audiences for video games for example most of the people that play fps games are, are younger there's not a lot of old people that play fps games because their reaction time is shittier i i, I wonder how i know that that doesn't mean that you want to fucking add in some weird lag feature into the into the fucking game to make it easier for them there are target audiences for games and you don't have to just keep changing the game and making it different just because you want more people to play it. Because at a certain point, you reach the point where you you start cannibalizing your initial audience. This is essentially admitting to making leveling a prohibitive Spell aspect patching. of the game that has no value. Which is the only way I can really see this. If you're saying we want to respect people's time by making them skip our game... You, how have you designed this fucking... Well, how are you respecting somebody's time whenever you're asking them to spend their real money that they earned with their time at their job to play your game again? Like, how is it respecting somebody's time if you want that person to spend their money? Because their money is their time. Like, you don't just, like... Like, even... Like, you, you go to work, you get paid, you know, $10 an hour. Right? I mean, like, this is your time. This money is... Time is money, friend. How are you respecting somebody's time if you're wanting them to pay extra money for something they already paid for? That, with money that they spent their time getting. It, it just seems like a really terrible point to make. It's crazy. It, it's arguing against your own fucking interests, honestly. Our goal with all items of any type is that they not offer an advantage that imbalances the game. Yeah. We understand that this line is based on player interpretation, so we ask for your patience while we test in alpha and listen to your feedback. Again, it's not our feedback, it's the feedback of people under an NDA. And then they do the good old... Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't be a PR statement if they didn't say for transparency. So for transparency on future plans, we're also contemplating but have not finalized a Battle Pass style program that would combine store items on a periodic basis. This will also be tested ahead of time to ensure it provides strong value without disrupting gameplay for those not participating. Much further along, there is also the possibility of optional expansions, which would have a separate cost. Now, in terms of expansions... That's fine. fine. Yeah, I can accept that. It's a to yeah. totally normal thing. I'll pay for content that actually is worth paying for. Yeah. In terms of a battle True. pass, if it's just going to be things that like are already in the cash shop, like it's not the worst system in the world because at that point we've already sort of lost this battle. If they're selling things in the battle pass that are part yeah. of like you know convenience and fucking quality of life stuff, we've already it's lost over. at that stage. Yeah, but if it's, it's just over. cosmetics, again, I don't like cosmetics in, in my MMOs. I think True. they devalue content. I Real. think that it puts the impetus on developers to make the the cosmetics good and the cosmetics yep. that people don't pay for bad yep. because that's where they make the money and that's truly yep. what's True. at play at every stage here they look at what makes them money and if if making cosmetics for the cash shop makes them more money than making them for the game do you think they're going to put a bunch of effort into making cosmetics for the game of course they're not it, it's just that simple and i think there's a lot of people that want to go back and like second guess common sense and like try to rationalize in their head oh no they never do that to me but yeah, they will. And they do. They do that with WoW. Look at how much look at how much better the fucking cosmetic mounts look than the fucking game mounts. Look at like back in WAD, the same shit happened. Like it's as soon as you provide a profit incentive, then companies are gonna follow that incentive. The solution is don't have the incentive. Yeah, it it's just logical. It, it it's like if you follow listen, if you follow what is in somebody's best interest you can just know what they're going to do. Especially with a big company like this. Just follow the money, look at what's in their best interest, and that's what they're going to do. It's common sense. It's business. We all know mm -hmm. how capitalism works. And this is all the way through. It's the same thing with the, with the quality of life and the convenience in the game. And personally, guys, I don't know about you, but I'm fucking sick of people using these terms of pay for convenience and pay for quality of life. Yeah. Because they're the PR terms. You might as well be uh -huh. walking around with a New World t-shirt and hat on doing their job for them. I do because actually this have a isn't New World pay for convenience. Hat. This is paying to not be inconvenienced. This isn't quality of life. This is paying to remove barriers that the company have put in there themselves. It is what it is. And you're doing the PR job for them by using these terms that are loaded in the favor of those companies and what they're doing. That's we what's so sad to me is to see people that actively work against their own best interest in simping for a trillion dollar company that doesn't care about them. People can't have opinions. 
that don't align with your own. No, it's not that they can't have opinions. It's that their opinions are not based off of reality. They're based off of terms that were fed to them by a company who's who's for profit. Like this is a for-profit company feeding you vocabulary that you're then regurgitating to rationalize your own bad decisions. Of course you can have an opinion, but I can have an opinion too that your opinion's fucking stupid. Should start calling them by what they are. This is paying to not be inconvenienced and it's not something yeah. we should be doing. It's not good. And I think the perfect example of this would be World of Warcraft, the Burning Crusade. True. Let's think about how the game used to be monetized. It yep. was a box price, a subscription price and an expansion price. So where they made most of their money was subscriptions. Of course it is. So how do they get that much money from subscriptions? They make the game worthwhile to play month on month on month, year round. And the reason that they do that is because that's the only way that they get money. And then, of the course, when you really look cool. at what they do nowadays, it's more about like patch cycles and yeah. ca cannibalizing their own content mm -hmm. to basically skip you forward to the new stuff because they don't care if you play for six months in a row. They don't care if you play for 12 months in a row. That would be nice. But at the end of the day, they want you to play on the patch and buy some microtransactions instead. Yeah. And if 100 people quit, chances are 10 people have a higher ceiling of spending that they will make up for those 100 people leaving the game. All the boiling That's frogs. why the game design has gone that way. And what I mean by self-cannibalizing of content, back then when like you joined into the burning crusade a year into the game you didn't skip forward to fucking black temple you didn't like get a bunch of, of mm -hmm. epics given to you and a bunch of gear that was as good as serpent shrine cavern and tempest keep and skip forward and yep. not have to do all that content that was there that was good content that took exactly. a lot of time to make exactly they used to have you actually do that there was if you didn't have time or the skill to be a tier six i actually never really thought about it like that that they skip people forward in order to get more people to come back for the patches because there's new content for everybody. And then more people coming back just gives them a higher chance of being able to get microtransaction sales. Yeah, that I never really thought about it like that, but I think that that could definitely be what they're doing. I mean, obviously it might not be, but that's certainly the way that it seems to me. That's the formula? It seems that way. Raider, you had tier five mm -hmm. guilds, you had tier four guilds, you had guilds that were there consistently year mm -hmm. round playing these raids and that was just where they operated and they had fun playing the game in that way because the game was designed around that but nowadays you don't have to do the previous raid once the new one yep. comes out there's no real reason to do it other than tertiary things like getting cosmetics or, or you know if you want some achievements or whatever yeah uh, th they just remove it they just skip you forward give you the items that are pretty much what the old items used to be so that you can do the new raid and I think it's a terrible way to do things, but they've gone that way because it's easier to design a game for people to play for a couple of months than it is for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they're making more money by the, had there been a higher ceiling of spending. And that's how game design's gone. Yeah, and higher ceiling I think it's spending. really observable that that's how it is. And you can look at the MM MMOs over the years and see how that. the design's changed. And I hope after Big me saying agree. this, if you are one of those people who say, oh, I work 10 hours a day, so I like to be able to skip things in games, I hope you can hear me here and look at what I'm saying and see that you are just perpetuating your own problem here. Because if the games were just designed where the leveling was yeah. not by their own company's definition, something that they just want you to skip, you would be having fun in these games and wouldn't want to skip it. You wouldn't exactly. want to pay money to skip this content. So yeah, I think the video has exactly. gone on long enough. Uh, I have a platform. I'm lucky enough to have one. So I, I'm going to continue to talk about this because I do really think it's important and Honestly, I just want what's best for the game. The people that are saying, you know, oh, you hate the game, you want the game to do badly. I'd love to hear a reason as to why. I, I truly do believe in the saying, a rising tide raises all ships. And I'm an MMO content creator. I want MMOs to do well. And that that's all there is really to it. I, I want this game to be long-term good. So when people say, oh, you know, if it does go pay to win, if it does have monetization issues post-launch, just quit. I don't think that's a good thing to say because we want this game to do well. And if before launch, they're already talking about things that are raising huge red flags and being inconsistent in the way that they say things. Yeah, and like, I don't want to quit. Like, that's the thing is like, I don't want to quit. I, I don't want to because the thing is, if I quit, then I just give up. We're going to have problems going forward. And yeah. we, I think, honestly, preventative is much better than the cure. Take my word from that from experience. Absolutely. But so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Yeah, once it's in the game, that's it. Like they're not gonna take it out once it in the once it's in the game. Hopefully leave a comment, like the video, subscribe if you're not already. Um, join me on Twitch. We'll be playing some PSO2 New Genesis later, mm -hmm. and I have a Patreon if you want to support me further. So thank you very much for watching. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace.
And uh, why is somebody worried about the Ashley Creation Shop? Because people aren't talking about that right now because the game's not even, it's not even getting released for like a, a million years, right? Like people aren't thinking about the Ashes of Creation Shop because it, it's not coming out in two months. And it didn't just get slipped in under the radar, under NDA. Like, of course, people have problems with the Ashes of Creation Shop. Uh, yeah, 100%. But that doesn't, like, New World is coming out in, like, a couple of months. Let me read the rest of these real quick. And uh, I'll see what this is. We never said that we would stick to cosmetics items. We said that we would do so at launch. If you were too stupid to understand that, it's your fault, not ours. Now give us your money. This is exactly what Blizzard did whenever they took everybody's money for those toys by adding intentionally vague wording, by not holding themselves uh, liable for having to actually pay the money for the tournament. Do you guys remember whenever that happened? So back in Burn... Not Burning Crusade. Why did I say Burning Crusade? Back in BFA. Um, back in BFA... I guess it's because they cost the same amount of money. Uh, what would end up happening is there was a toy that Blizzard put out, and they uh, the toy, what you had to do is you would buy the toy, and then a percentage of the money from the toy would go towards the, uh, the amount of money that would be paid to players at BlizzCon for winning the tournament. So 75% uh, of the money went to Blizzard. And I defended this because it was the industry standard. That was the same amount of money that Dota put in. Now, in retrospect, I obviously wish I didn't because this is what ended up happening, right? The Transmorpher Beacon, yes. Blizzard used the players supporting the toy as a rationalization to not pay their $500,000. They said because the players raised it, now we don't have to pay for it ourselves. That's what Blizzard did. I can't even fucking believe that. I really can't. I, can, I still cannot believe they did that. Uh, imagine imagine paying for a game. Imagine paid for a game and then pay not to play it again. That's exactly right. Mark Twain has a quote that applies to the deniers. It's easier to trick a man than it is to convince them that he's been tricked. Well, yeah, because if you convince somebody that they've been tricked, it goes against their ego because people don't want to admit that they're stupid. That's completely fucking accurate. Uh, launch raises all kinds of red flags around the world. Of course it does. If it was a quality of life improvement, it would be in the patch notes and not in the cash shop. True. My hype for New World has instantly died. True. Uh, Amazon Game Studios needed to open needed this for a home run. Instead of listening to gamers, they kept listening to corporate. True. Uh, the game is so good that you want to pay to skip it. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it.